suppose you are standing in an open field now if you look up what will you see you will see the vast blue sky the sky encircles or surrounds our planet earth and it's known as atmosphere now if you look at the atmosphere from space it will appear like magical whips and like other magical and miraculous things the atmosphere is invisible to us and it can only be felt in this lesson we shall discuss about this layer of earth that is atmosphere in details imagine yourself in a warm cozy blanket during a cold winter night similarly the atmosphere is just like that blanket protecting our earth now imagine that there is no atmosphere it means that there is no air so we will not be able to hear anything similarly we will not be able to breathe because there is no oxygen or air now we also know that the fishes breathe in the dissolved oxygen present in water now in absence of air the fishes will not be able to survive similarly if there is no air or atmosphere then our sky will look as black as outer space and the birds will not be able to fly thus atmosphere is an important component of earth and it helps in sustenance of life on earth now let us know what does atmosphere mean well atmosphere is an invisible blanket of air surrounding the earth now the word atmosphere comes from two words atmos and sphere where atmos means vapor and sphere means ball so atmosphere is an invisible blanket or a sphere that is composed of vapor or air and this invisible blanket as we can see here surrounds our earth now this layer extends for several thousand kilometers above the earth's surface however this layer is not uniform throughout this means that as we go higher and higher the air becomes thinner and thinner and it gradually fades away or blends with space and we actually does not know where the atmosphere ends now this layer is composed of several gases let's know about them so as mentioned just now the atmosphere is composed of several gases this pie chart shows the composition of atmosphere and here we can see that nitrogen is the most abundant gas present in atmosphere and its amount is 78% nitrogen is followed by oxygen the amount of oxygen present in air is 21% and the remaining 1% is composed of several gases in small percentage for instance carbon dioxide is present in 0.9 percentage 0.03 percentage of air is composed of argon and the remaining 0.07% is composed of several gases like water vapor hydrogen helium and other gases now apart from these gases dust particles and pollen grains are also present in air now these gases have several utilities which makes atmosphere an important component of the earth we shall now discuss about the uses of each of these gases well we know that nitrogen is the most abundant gas in atmosphere and this gas helps to maintain soil fertility and in growth of plants now imagine a chocolate lover is given a cocoa plant instead of chocolates will he relish the plant just like chocolates of course not similarly the plants also cannot absorb nitrogen directly from air as a result nitrogen fixing bacteria is present at the root nodules of the plants which convert the nitrogen into usable form and thus helps the root to absorb nitrogen this is how nitrogen enters the food chain and all living beings can utilize this vital gas we know 21% of atmosphere is composed of oxygen 
This oxygen is given by plants which we breathe in and we breathe out carbon dioxide which is eventually utilized by plants. Thus atmosphere as we can see here helps in exchange of these vital gases. Now the oxygen that we inhale is an important gas. It helps us to perform metabolic activities of our body and also helps in our survival. I just mentioned that Carbon dioxide that we breathe out is eventually utilized by plants in the process of making food with the help of sunlight and water. Now this process in which the plants make food is known as photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide which is exhaled by us is eventually utilized by plants in the process of photosynthesis. Now an important byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen. This means that this vital gas is exhaled by plants and is released into the air. This gas is then eventually consumed by us. Thus, a natural balance between gases is maintained in nature. Now, apart from assisting plants in making food, carbon dioxide is also an important greenhouse gas. Now, being an important greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide absorbs sun's heat during daytime and it does not let this heat to escape at night by absorbing the heat. Thus, carbon dioxide prevents the heat to escape from the earth's surface and keep the earth during warm even at night. So you realize how important greenhouse gases are. In their absence, the entire world would freeze at night. Now, as we know, the amount of carbon dioxide present in air is 0.9%. So, 0.9% of air is composed of CO2 or carbon dioxide. Now, this amount helps to maintain suitable temperature on earth. Now, imagine what will happen if the percentage of CO2 increases in air. Well, let's find out. Now, before proceeding with our lesson, let us see if we can answer this. We will have to identify an important greenhouse gas that is present in air among these options. And the options are hydrogen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen and oxygen. So, which of them do you think is the correct option? Well, you can't remember? Let me help you out. We know carbon dioxide is an important greenhouse gas among all these options. So, the correct option is carbon dioxide. We know atmosphere is an important blanket of air surrounding our earth. And within this atmosphere, different greenhouse gases like CO2 is present that helps to keep the earth warm. Now imagine if someone wraps you with more and more blankets, will you feel comfortable? Of course not. You will feel warm and sweaty. Similarly, if the percentage of greenhouse gases increases in the atmosphere, then our earth will become warmer than before. Now, this unnatural rise in global temperature due to increased concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is known as global warming. So, global warming refers to overall rise in the temperature of the earth. In fact, this word global warming can be separated into two parts, global and warming, where global means globe or the earth and this phrase simply means that our globe or the earth is becoming warmer. So global warming refers to a natural rise in the overall temperature of the earth. Well, as mentioned earlier, this unnatural rise in global temperature occurs due to increased concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Now we shall discuss about some of the impacts of global warming. Well, the most prominent impact of global warming is climate change. Well, we know that due to global warming, the average temperature of the earth is increasing over the decades. So, with every passing decade, our earth is becoming warmer than before. 
in fact all the countries across the world are experiencing hotter days and for longer duration now due to this abnormal rise in global temperature the rate of evaporation is also increasing and this is leading to changes in precipitation pattern also heat waves and destructive thunderstorms are becoming more intense and frequent due to global warming now these changes in precipitation pattern frequent thunderstorms and heat waves are showing that our climate is changing so global warming definitely leads to change in climate now also due to overall rise in temperature the soil dries up in several parts of the world as moisture evaporates from the soil and this eventually leads to droughts now the soil as we know is the medium for growth of plants so frequent drought affects the growth of crops and this eventually leads to crop failure and food insecurity thus global warming intensifies water shortages in already water stressed regions of the world and this also leads to crop failure and food insecurity now this unfortunate incidences of crop failure water scarcity and food insecurity threatens the existence of life on earth now if you take ice out of refrigerator what will happen it will melt right similarly due to rise in global temperature or global warming the ice caps and glaciers of the world are melting rapidly and this will lead to rise in sea level as a result the coastal regions and the islands of the world will eventually get submerged under the water so global warming will lead to rise in sea level and flooding of coastal regions now as the coastal regions will get submerged under water so the people living in these regions will become homeless and they will lose their habitats so a severe consequence of global warming is that it will eventually lead to loss of habitats especially in the coastal regions and islands of the world now look at this poor polar bear it is stranded in the vast ocean now do you think it will be able to survive like this for long well obviously not but how did this polar bear land in such a miserable state well we know that due to excessive rise in global temperature the ice caps and glaciers of the world are melting now we know that the polar bears mainly reside in the polar regions of the world which remain covered with permanent snow and ice now as the ice caps and glaciers are depleting so the polar bears are losing their homes and they are struggling for their survival so we find that melting of ice due to global warming will lead to habitat loss and extinction of species especially the ones that live in the polar regions of the world thus we find that global warming has several evil consequences like climate change flooding droughts melting of ice caps loss of habitats and even extinction of species in short global warming means complete destruction of earth and loss of life so in today's lesson we discussed about an important layer of the earth that is atmosphere now atmosphere as we know is an invisible blanket of air or an envelope of air surrounding our planet earth now this layer is composed of several important gases like nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide etc now among these we know carbon dioxide is an important greenhouse gas present in air its function is to absorb heat of the sun and keep the earth warm but if the percentage of carbon dioxide increases excessively in the air or if the percentage of greenhouse gases increases in the air then it will lead to global warming now global warming refers to unnatural rise in global temperature and it has several other evil consequences now if the global temperature continues to rise at an excessive rate then our planet earth will not be habitable anymore
So this brings us to the end of today's discussion on composition of atmosphere and global warming. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now